Hi everybody, I'm Brian Wilkerson and today I'm going to show you how to assemble and install the Alaria Tech 370Z Differential Cooler Kit. We're going to start with unboxing, assemble most of it on the bench, and then we're going to take it to the car for the final install. So we're going to start here by just going over what's in the box. We have our hoses, tilt and pump, Cetrab cooler and fan combo pack. This is the rear mounting bar parts list along with some written instructions. Hardware kit with fittings, nuts, bolts, zip ties, etc. All in one bag. And then the actual shroud. The first thing we're going to do is unbox this Cetrab cooler, which is th this is a whole cooler and fan pack. And we spec'd this out specifically for diff cooling duties. So this is cool. It comes with the fan already attached to the cooler with the shroud. So that's nice and tidy. You're going to want to take your hardware bag, double check it to the parts list we supply, and just make sure that we gave you everything you paid for. We've got two anti-abrasion wraps here. These are going to go on your hoses later. A few zip ties. One M22 Cetrab fitting to go into the cooler. Two M22 Cetrab fittings to go into the cooler. If you ordered a kit for a stock rear diff cover, then you are going to get two of these M18-8 XRP adapter fittings. Okay. If you got one with a Z1 cover, then you're only going to get one of these, and then you're going to get a banjo bolt. A yeah, banjo bolt set up. Dash 8 banjo, a bolt that we actually drill out so that it flows a little better, and then two aluminum crush washers. Two of these rubber isolators for mounting the cooler. One inline filter. This keeps uh, any chunks of metal that your diff might make, your ring and pinion, uh, keeps them from going through the pump in the cooler. That's very important. Two of these 3 8 NPT to dash 8 adapter fittings. These are going to go in the pump. And then your hardware quarter 20s with washers and lock nuts, 1024s with washers and lock nuts as well. And these are to secure the cooler to the shroud and the pump to the shroud. Alright, so we got our cooler out of the box here. It's got some plastic caps blocking the holes to keep debris out. We are going to loosen them. Take your M22 to dash 8 fitting. Okay, we have two of these. Take a little bit of oil for the O-ring. We'll uh, make sure you get oil all the way around that O-ring. M22s go into the cooler. All right. Tighten these down. It's an O-ring, so you want to make it tight, but not too tight. That's it for this for now. Next up is the tilt and pump. I'm going to pull the ports, port plugs out of it. And this is where these two 3 8 MPT to dash 8s are going to go. Because it's a pipe thread, it needs a sealant. I'm partial to the paste, but you can use the tape if you want. It will also work just fine. So, put a little pipe paste on here. Because they test these pumps from the factory, they might have a little bit of oil on the inside ports here. You want to wipe that out a little bit. Insert our XRP adapter fittings here. Because it's a tapered thread, and because this housing is like a polymer, like a plastic, you don't want to over tighten these either. It's a 13 16 wrench, or an adjustable if that's what you have. And now we're all done with the pump for now is two. Sit over here with the cooler. Next thing you're gonna do is grab the shroud. That's what everything mounts to is the shroud. Basically this is like the, the mothership that our pump and our cooler ride on. Then you're going to grab your 
1024 socket cap bolts with nylocks, nuts. One, two, three, four of these. Okay, and we are gonna mount our pump to the shroud. Pump's gonna sit on the shroud like this. You'll see that the pump has a little arrow. That arrow faces down. Start by putting all the bolts in the pump just to locate it. Get a washer for both sides. One under the head of the bolt, one under the nut. So on the underside goes the washer and nylon lock nut, like so. This hardware takes a 5 30 seconds Allen and a 3 8 wrench. Before you tighten these up, they look like this. As you tighten it, all right, it smashes down and captures the bracket underneath of the rubber. So you want to make it about that tight. Next we're going to mount the cooler and fan pack to the shroud. And go back to our hardware assortment. These little rubber isolators are going to go here. These little stainless quarter 20 button head bolts. Larger washers. And again, washer on both sides, under the head of the bolt, and washer on the on the nut side. These quarter twenty hardware uh, combination is going to be a seven sixteenths wrench and a five thirty seconds Allen. Again, because we're bolting down rubber. We don't need to super torque these things down. Basically, I tighten them so that the threads of the bolt just get into the nylon uh, plastic locking part of the nylock nut. And here's the main assembly. The shroud with the cooler and the pump mounted to it. Now we're gonna get to the plumbing. Uh, we have three hoses here. We're gonna start with the short one. Goes right from the pump to the cooler, or should I say from the cooler to the pump if we're talking the direction of flow. And we'll get to the flow direction in a minute here. So that goes on there, simple as that. Highly recommend using aluminum and wrenches. These are from XRP. And we're tightening this one down. I recommend putting a wrench on the fitting that's in the pump just to make sure that you don't accidentally over tighten the fitting into the pump. So hold the fitting in the pump with a wrench and then tighten the AN fitting onto it. Next hose is gonna be the longest of the three. This one is gonna go on the cooler itself, which will be the cooler inlet. Room for our little inline filter. Keeps the metal junk out of our cooler and our pump. You go on here like so. You can actually tighten this up now. Just leave a little space here. So this hose is going to want to rest on this one. Just hold it out a little bit when you tighten it so that that does not rest on the other hose. Hose number three is going to go right on the pump. You can have it angled angled out like this, so the 45 kind of facing outboard. Again, this one you can tighten down now if you want to. I do, again, suggest holding the fitting on the pump. So now you've got all three hoses in place on the kit. This is all on the bench. You're almost done. This is essentially what your diff cooler plumbing should look like. All right, we're out here in the shop and we're gonna do the physical install on the car of the differential cooler kit itself. By now you should already have it all assembled on the bench, which makes your life a lot easier. It's gonna look something like this. And then we've got our remaining parts laid out right here for the install. I have taken the liberty of removing a few things already just to speed this process up. As you can see, I removed the exhaust system. Uh, that's not normally necessary, but it does make life a little easier and in this case, um, it uh, will allow you to kind of see what I'm doing a little better. Uh, also, 
I have removed this heat shield that would normally go here. That is a requirement for the kit. That heat shield has to go. And I've removed the drain plug and the fill plug from the diff. The diff is now empty. The first thing we're going to do is install our M18 to Dash 8 adapters. One will go in the drain and one will, of course, go in the fill. Space is a little tight when you're installing the fill plug fitting, so I recommend using a 15 16 socket to do that. So, as you can see, we have well, you can kind of see up in there. That is our fill drain are now converted to Dash 8. If you had a Z1 cover, right this drain faces straight down which doesn't really give you any ground clearance for a fitting so this banjo that you would get if you spec your kit with the z1 would thread right up into the bottom of that and basically give you the same thing that we have with the standard ordinismo cover next thing we're going to do is mount this rear cross brace just loosely it goes in this orientation with these little raised spacers that are welded on they go on the top side. You're going to use the remaining two quarter 20 bolts and washers for that. All right, so as you can see, bolts facing down, both of those, and we have it loose. These holes in the shroud are slotted, so you have a little bit of adjustment here. So for now, we're just going to leave them loose, and then we're going to hang it in the car. So before I said that you need to remove this heat shield, it's a good idea to keep two of the four 10 millimeter nuts that hold it on because these studs right here are actually going to get used to hold your diff cooler up. So hopefully you didn't bang those threads up removing them. And then we're also going to remove these two 12 millimeter headed bolts that are directly behind your diff on this chassis brace. Now we're just going to swing the whole assembly up into the car. And it's a little tricky to do. You got to get the rear mounting point on the studs while holding the hardware in place. Get your front bolt started. Get the nuts started on the rear studs. And it's hung in place, really. Should look something like this. First, we're gonna tighten up these front bolts. Then we can kind of square up our rear brace, because again, the holes are slotted to make things easier. Once you got it squared up, tighten those bolts down. Then all we have left are these right here. They should still be loose and you can tighten them up. Those are our quarter 20s that hold the shroud to the rear bracket. That's a 7 16 nut and a 5 32nd Allen on the other side. Now that the cooler is secured, we can route our hoses here. They should go over top of this chassis brace. 45 degree end on the shorter hose coming out of the pump is going to thread onto what would be the fill fitting and the long 90 degree hose threads right onto the drain. And the hoses should look something like this. You can see the abrasion resistant wrap should be here where your hose is coming to contact underneath of your toe arm and laying across this here brace. That is it for the physical install of the diff cooler kit, really. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is wire up your pump and your fan. The fill process is not as complicated as you might think. You're going to take the hose off of the fill and take the fitting out here, okay? You're going to fill the diff, turn your pump on, it will pull the fluid out of the diff, fill the cooler, fill the diff again, okay? Basically what you want to do is fill the diff to its normal level, but also make sure that the cooler is filled as well. So to do that, pump fluid until it comes out of the return hose, and then top off the diff to its normal level, and that is how you will know that you have both this filled to its correct capacity and the cooler filled as well. Once you've got your hoses all in place and your diff filled, you can then go ahead, take some of the supplied zip ties and tie these hoses down to this tube here. 
and you could also throw one here if you'd like as well to this chassis brace just to keep things from moving around. Thanks a lot for your interest and or purchasing the Alaria Tech Differential Cooler Kit. If you have any questions, we're happy to answer them via email or you can call or drop them right here in the comments section of this video. Thanks a lot.